Here is the second video in our series for building an A-frame house and this one is going to have 2x6 chung and groove for the roof sheathing and the floor sheathing. And we're not going to have any fascia board on the side. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this, give you an idea of what the inside might look like. Again, we're going to have collar ties and we're going to use beams for our roof rafters that are going to be spaced four foot on center. And this is the way I remember them building A-frames a long time ago. It would have two by six tongue and groove for the flooring in the roof, and the roof rafters would sit on top of the floor beams, or directly on top of the concrete footings. Instead of sitting on top of a wall framing plate and the floor sheathing, as I showed you in the previous video. And since it's not going to look like this, let's just go ahead and remove some of this stuff and provide you with a view from above where we are going to have four by eight floor beams. And these beams will be spaced 48 inches on center. And we can do that as long as we're using the two by six tongue and groove floor sheathing. And something else you will need to do a little different will be to move the center footing back on both sides, unless you're going to be covering it up by building a deck or a landing at each end of the building. Next up, let's go ahead and add the roof rafters. And this design will have blocks in between the rafters and a beam underneath them. And the beam really isn't going to be a supporting beam. We really don't need a ridge beam for this design. However, we are going to add some support posts underneath the beam to make this building a little stronger. Now, a couple of you pointed out in the previous video that it would be difficult to assemble the ridge framing. And doing it this way might be a little easier because you could always figure out the length of each one of the roof rafters along with the floor beams and assemble everything together and then stand it up in one section or assemble the two rafters together at the top and even install the collar tie if you need to on the floor and then stand that up into place if that will work better for you also. Now, if you need a little more information on that, let us know in the comment area and I will walk you through the entire process of how I might assemble something like this. And as you notice, we're gonna have a couple of braces here. You're going to need to plumb up this section of the building and brace it off at the sides. We're not going to worry about this right now because we could always adjust that a little later. And you can always change the bottom design of the rafter if you want to, to add some fascia board. And you can see where the roof rafter beam is now sitting on top of the floor beam. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other side. And you can use whatever you want to here, nails, lag screws, and even other types of building hardware to assemble this like a strap in the middle and the strap might not be necessary again because of the way the building is designed and i'll go into that in more detail if you need that in another video and i think the most common method you're going to use will be to bolt this together however i won't be able to provide you with the types of bolts or the amount of bolts that you're going to need for your project Let's go ahead and zoom in on the bracing here. We can simply nail a block to the rafter and then nail our bracing to that block. And you could always extend the blocks up a little bit like we've done here. Otherwise, you might need to shape the top of the brace. And then we're just using a stake that we've driven into the ground. And we can attach the stake to the brace with some screws or nails also. And I think what I would do in a situation like this would be to assemble one section to create a pattern I'm going to repeat to assemble the rest of the building. And this would allow me to double check the end here to make sure that the beams are going to be the correct length where the block will die into the corner here. And that will make a little more sense once we go through a little bit more of the video. And after we have the first section braced off, we can go ahead and install our next section. And to stabilize everything, we're just simply going to use a scrap of lumber or along one by four or two by four. And you can put one of these on both sides if that's going to work better for you. 
and we can simply use nails or screws to position the rafters in the correct location. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to grab the rafter and kind of shake it a little bit to make sure that it isn't going to fall down because you can always install additional bracing. And this would be one of those situations where it's going to be better to install additional bracing before continuing on with the assembly. If you're not 100% sure it's currently strong enough. And again, that might be a topic for another video. Let us know if you need more information on that also. So not too difficult. We're just simply going to continue on with our bracing and our rafters one section at a time until we get to the end of the building. And then we're going to double check everything and make sure that this side is plumb also. And the bracing is going to need to be removed after you've installed the roof sheathing up to the point where this bracing will need to be removed. You don't need to remove it before you install the roof sheathing. Just remove it after you've installed the sheathing up from the bottom or from the top to where it's going to have to be removed before you can finish with the roof sheathing. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the floor blocking. You can see here where we have a row of 2x8 blocks centered on the beam going right down the middle. And you could always install 4x8 blocks there if you're looking for a little more support. And the reason why we need to have the beams stop at a particular point maybe an inch and a half from this point here. And we could always shape the end of the block here if we wanted to. And like I said, hopefully that makes a little more sense once you look at this section of the construction. And we will need a block. I don't think you need to get crazy here. We don't need to use a lot of building hardware here. I think you can simply nail the block to the roof rafter. And don't forget, you're going to have a bolt or two coming through here, meaning that you're probably going to have to notch some holes out of the block here or lower the bolts so you can use a 2x4 or even a 2x2 so that the bolts aren't in the way of your framing. After this, we are going to install our floor sheathing again, two by six tongue and groove. And you can shape the end of the block here so that you can get some nailing from the roof sheathing into the floor sheathing here. That would be a nice transfer. You're going to nail the floor sheathing into this block and then the roof sheathing into the floor sheathing. And that should make a nice transfer here. And in this example here, we are gonna be notching a section of the floor sheathing to go around the rafter beams and then cutting smaller pieces here to fit in between each rafter. And you're probably going to need to nail the floor with 16 D nails and make sure that the floor sheathing has at least a four foot break in between the joints or breaks of the sheathing. And you could always do two boards at a time. I chose not to do that here, but I will provide you with an example of that with the roof sheathing. And of course, a nice floor finish here around the rafter beams. And I would recommend leaving at least a sixteenth of an inch gap between the rafter beam and the floor sheathing right here. And let's go ahead and remove some of the sheathing here to provide you with an example of why we actually installed the blocks. Now next up, you could either install the walls or the ridge beam along with the rafter blocking, or you could install the rafter blocking and the collar ties and then use the collar ties for scaffolding. You can put some boards on top of the collar ties to assemble all of the ridge components instead of working off of a long ladder, if that makes sense. Let's go ahead and zoom in. We are going to have a beam here blocking here. You might need two boards here if you can't find something tall enough. For example, if I need a 2x16 and the biggest board I can find in my town is a 2x10, then I'm going to have to have a block sitting on top of another block here. Or use a taller ridge beam. Let's go ahead and remove the block to give you an idea of how the rafters are going to sit on top of the beam. And you don't need to use this beam. You can have the rafters connect to each other and then install blocks here as long as you have the collar ties or the rafter ties to keep everything from spreading apart. 
Next up, we can install the walls or we can install the roof sheathing. But I would suggest installing the walls if you're going to have a difficult time fastening the studs to the top plates. But again, that will be a decision I will leave up to you. And the wall framing could always go all the way up to the bottom of the roof sheathing or the bottom plate could be even with the bottom of the roof rafter or you could install the wall framing underneath the roof beam. And if you need more information about that, let us know in the comment area. Next up, let's go ahead and install the collar ties. And again, I would like to bolt the collar ties to the roof rafters. And before we install our fascia board, let's go ahead and take a look at the front and the back of the building here, back of the building. And then take another look at the upper roof framing here, just to provide you with another view that I might not have provided you with earlier on. And another method you might be able to use to install a post in the middle would be to add another collar tie and then add a block to the center, something like this, where we can have a post fully supported by basically a double joist. And depending upon what your engineer says, you might not need a structural beam. And something like this will work just fine. Also keep in mind that I'm not providing you with a lot of building hardware in this video. And if you need more information on that, feel free to let us know in the comment area. And at this end here, I went ahead and just simply installed the post on top of the same sized header I used in the previous example. However, you might consider installing a larger header and maybe even double trimmers underneath that header. Again, this will depend upon whether or not this is going to be considered a structural load bearing beam or as I'm using it in this video as a decorative beam. Something to make the top of the ceiling look a little nicer. And while editing the video, I realized that I said this board here, the one that's going to be used to position the rafters on the other side. When I said you could attach it to the other side, I meant this side over here. I did not mean the underside or the other side of the roof rafter. And you could always install more than one brace at different levels, especially when dealing with longer roof rafters. And this is what I meant by the double board spacing for the roof sheathing. We're going to have two boards on the same break and then another two boards and then another two boards. And you could use this method here for the floor sheathing. Probably not going to have a problem with it. And another example here of how you could finish off the ridge with the sheathing, depending upon whether or not the roofer is going to accept it or not. And we're going to add a spacer between the back of the fascia board and the front of the building. This will allow us to install siding or stucco underneath the fascia board. And for those of you who have been watching my videos for a long time, you've seen that plenty of times in previous videos. Next up, let's go ahead and install the fascia board. And that's going to look something like this. And if you wanted to install fascia board on the bottom, you would just simply reshape the bottom of the roof rafters to where it would be similar to the installation in the previous video. And for those of you who have made it to the end of the video, Feel free to leave any comments, questions, or details about specific information you might need to build something like this. Something I might not have provided you with in the video, or something I might need to spend a little more time on.